Hello everyone, my name is Chris and welcome to Parenting Autism. I'm joined by my lovely wife Sandy. Hello. And this is episode 33. And Sandy, tell us what we got on tap for episode 33. Well, I don't have a specific title in mind yet. I guess I'll figure that out after we chat a bit. Sure. It's been a couple of weeks since we've recorded and it just seems like so much has happened. So it's just going to touch on some of the things that have been coming up in our home in the past couple of weeks. Um, a lot of positive things, some other things that are new behaviors, you know, like I always say it's whack-a-mole, you whack one down, another pops up, you know, that yep. sort of thing. But um, I was telling you today when we were driving on our way to church that I just, I'm in a peaceful place right now and I'm so grateful for that. And I want to share that because I, I know that I've been communicating and talking with some people who have reached out to us through the podcast, and they are where we used to be, you know, in those first year or two of the diagnosis, and you're just wondering, will I ever feel peace again? And I'm here to give that hope and encouragement that in our case, I'm feeling it, you know, and it's, is it easy every day? No, but it just does get easier. And when people used to tell me that, you know, even some other parents would tell me that and I'd be like, really, you know, you hold on to that hope, but mm-hmm. did it, would it ever really happen? But it has for us. It, it definitely is easier. I think the more Bryce understands, um, the more he can express himself to us. And more importantly, I think really understand when we're talking to him and what we're wanting, it just seems like it's, It's just a little bit easier. I agree um, that it does seem more peaceful now that we have things. I don't know. Everything's kind of gelling together uh, between his um, therapies and life and work. So I do feel like it's a little more peaceful now that the train is going in one direction and we have all the cars connected. (laughs) That's a good analogy. (laughs) Uh, expanding upon that, I was also pointing out that I feel like Bryce's anxiety has decreased a bit. I mean, Mm -hmm. it was pretty intense for several months there where, you know, with the darkness, with the rain, I mean, it's not that it's gone away completely, but it's more manageable. But I also feel like he feeds off of us. And so I've seen your anxiety level go down in turn, you know, Mm -hmm. and I think that's all great. And then I have to say for myself, you know, reflecting on, I'm I'm enjoying this, but I'm also wondering like, why is this so much better right now? You know? And I, I really think it's because the acceptance that I experienced, uh, you know, a few months ago, it's really just brought me peace. I think Mm -hmm. that's what it is. I think once you accept that this is how, I don't want to say this is how it's going to be because we know we're all always progressing and changing. But I think I've just accepted that, you know, where I thought Bryce might, I don't know, maybe advance to the point that he would be Asperger's and not autism. I don't know. You know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm trying to say, though? Uh, I thought by age six, you know, we were going to see what we had seen in some other people that mm-hmm. had advanced further than what Bryce has. But it's OK. And I have I mean, I genuinely, truly have accepted that. And. I was telling one of my friends that I saw last weekend, you know, I'm like, I just love him so much. And she's like, of course. I'm like, no, I'm not just saying that I love him because he's my child. I love him. I love who he is. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't change him for anything. I really wouldn't. Yeah. I love everything about him. And I feel like he has made me a better person and he makes my world better just being the way that he is. But it is all about perspective and, and how you look at these things and you could stay focused on the negative and there's plenty of that to go around. Mm-hmm. But now that I've really accepted it and I have a different perspective and I'm just accepting Bryce for who Bryce is and then taking his lead, following his clues, listening to him, trying to just understand 
where he's coming from, mm-hmm. it just, it makes it, I, it, that does it make it easier to parent him, don't you think? Yeah, I've got a couple of things I want to chime in on that. Um, first was, I like to go to yard sales. That's one of my things. And so I'll share that. Uh, it's fun finding little treasures, but I came across this couple uh, at a yard sale this weekend and I was looking for some camping gear and uh, because I eventually want to take Bryce camping and she asked me if I had kids and I said yeah we have a wonderful little six-year-old boy with autism and she says oh my 18 year old has autism and um, he graduated high school I'm like wow I said that's congratulations that's a big milestone yeah and uh, she says, yep. And now um, he he tried college, but he he thought he's not ready for that yet. I said, that's OK. And she said that uh, he just got a job here locally. And I'm like, wow. I said, that is another huge that's milestone. Wonderful. So, I mean, it was nice to get encouragement from somebody else that yep. we didn't even know. And um, I think for me, too, is it's like I I look forward to my days with Bryce because you just never know what it's going to be. <laughs> and so it is, I, we just turn it into fun, whatever we're doing, you know? So we work around the behaviors and, you know, I, I distract them from behaviors that are negative and we turn it into a positive. And I, I think what helps me, like what you were saying, be at peace is he's come far enough that I know that a, he can bathe himself. Mm -hmm. He can wash his hair. He can brush his teeth. Mm -hmm. He can tell us how he's feeling pretty much, Mm -hmm. you know, if he's sad or if he's happy or if something bothered him, uh, a, a noise or if he doesn't like something now he can tell us hey I don't like that good point because um, he can say please yeah. stop or that's too loud or yeah. there's too many peoples and this yeah. this is all probably within the past couple of months that he's been able to tell us these things and um, I think that has relieved a lot you know that's on our shoulders about him you know he is getting self-sufficient he can put his shoes on now and his socks and he's learning how to get dressed by himself so all these things i i think give us hope and um relieve a little bit of the burden on our shoulders about okay well how is he going to be when he grows up well great news you know he he can do these things now and he's learning so much at school and through therapies that the light at the end of the tunnel is not a train coming at us. It's, it's hope. Definitely feel more hopeful. And I totally lost my train of thought. (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) But you know that I, I do, I think, I feel like our whole family is at peace right now. Uh, And like you said, his anxiety is lower. Um, Our anxiety is lower and we've been able to spend more time alone together because we've got two great sitters and uh well three great sitters including your mom and dad Mm -hmm. um and that has really given us time to reconnect as a couple and you know catch up with each other you know because we were passing so much during the day trying to get other things done that we we need that time um together just to you know catch up Well, yeah. And to stay connected. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one thing sitting here and talking about Bryce, but even when we do get this time, you know, together away from him, he does take up some of the conversation, but we're learning now and we really are having to learn all over again (laughs) how to talk about us, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and connect for us. And what, what do you want to do for a date and what's something fun that we can do? And we're not just talking about Bryce or the podcast or autism or something we read, you know, Mm -hmm. it's hard because it kind of consumes us in a lot of ways, but you have to have a little, you got to have some balance in there. And we are definitely finding ways to do that now. And that's Mm -hmm. been really, it's just been a wonderful thing for us. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're, 
we're going room by room in the new year also to, to clear out old things and, you know, mm-hmm. just simplify life and, and just make it simpler. Yeah, I agree that we're on a really good track and that's been a good thing. But, you know, as perfect at all as all of this sounds, <laughs> life isn't perfect and things are still happening. Sure. But I just feel like we just are in a better frame of mind. Mm -hmm. And I think all the things we just described is what contributes to that. And we were not in a position to have alone time together. And our minds were so consumed with just making Bryce better, making, you know, what else can we do? What else Mm -hmm. can we do? And there was a lot to be done. There were a lot of therapies and then you have the insurance and, you know, and we've, we've talked about this before, but we're kind of through that right now. And maybe that's why we are at a, place of peace i think to use another analogy it would be like baseball where before it was pitch after pitch after pitch that was coming at us as batters and we'd have to keep hitting them and now i think the pitches have slowed down you know that's a really great point yeah and it's given us some were fastball some were curveballs that we didn't see coming you know it's very true Mm -hmm. and i don't feel like we're just getting beat upon right every single right. day with something yeah. new mm-hmm. so but a couple of things that we have had going on that we're kind of figuring out ways to help bryce is uh, the retaliation thing that's mm-hmm. been going on lately that's what we call it because if we do or say something that he doesn't want to hear or see i mean it can be as simple as okay buddy we're getting ready to go to bed, you know, in the next, and we give him time, um, you know, we're getting ready to go to bed in the next 15 minutes to get the clock ticking. Sometimes he just will dramatically fall to the floor. And mm-hmm. then, you know, I know that's for attention. So we ignore that, you know, and that happens the fall, we'll call it, you know, mm-hmm. and I know um, that's how happened with his ABA tech as well because she was telling me about that and you know she was ignoring him because it was just for attention and Mm -hmm. you know that's one thing but the retaliation whole other thing the retaliation is something that if you or I did or actually somebody else but usually if it's you or I did something that he didn't like or that he thought we made a red choice right in his mind He is looking around for something to do that he knows is a red choice for him to do. Yes, like to drop something. Like tit for tat. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. That's it. So we don't even know we've done something that's upset him. And then all of a sudden, boom, he just, you know, gets his airplane and crashes it into something. Mm -hmm. Or he will drop his iPad on the floor, which thank God we have a protective cover on Mm -hmm. it. But, you know, and then when you say, why, what, what happened? Why did you do that? It. He has to then process and will tell us that we did something yeah, that he thought mommy was wrong. Did such and such. If I cough, because daddy did because we know and such. he has the issue with me coughing. Mm-hmm. So it's still if that cough hits him the wrong way, he's thinking I'm making a red choice, and then he does something in turn for a red choice. So, I you know when we saw that happening and happening, I'm like we got to find a way to address this. So my thought was okay, he's trying to express that he's upset. And he's not doing it verbally. He's doing it with action. So if we acknowledge it and say, hey, I know you're upset and we're sorry that fill in the blank happened. But you need to just say, I'm upset or tell us, hey, you made a red choice or hey, stop that. Don't drop something and don't you make a red choice by throwing something or hitting something because you're upset to get our attention to let you know you're upset you Mm -hmm. can tell us if you use your words then we'll know you're upset Mm -hmm. so i think if we just continue to take that reaction but you know that's one of those things that again a curveball comes out of nowhere you don't know why this is happening exactly then when we figured out he's retaliating Mm -hmm. oh my goodness now how do we respond to that yelling at him would certainly not be a solution punishing him is really not a solution because he's just trying to tell us in his way, hey, you did something that really upset me, mm-hmm. you know, but he doesn't quite know how to express that with words. So he shows you, hey, I know this upset you. <laughs> I'm letting you know you upset me. Right. So that's been something that you know, has 
been newer around here, mm-hmm. but I feel like since we've been telling him that I haven't had that happen as often. Right. I don't. A couple uh, of times yeah. I had it yesterday with something, but I just did the same thing. Reiterated, hey, you know, if that upset you. Well, of course, he was coming out of his sleep. I was waking him up. So, oh, you know, yeah. it's like the grumpy bear the, thing. The sleep, I think both ends of the bedtime, the morning waking up and going to bed are two times where he is Ex- fragile. Extra sensitive. Extra sensitive. So, so we so, give extra grace. Yeah, we give extra grace about how he gets up in the morning and how we go to bed at night. So it's, it's cause aren't we all that way? If we're tired or we're hungry, you yeah. don't want to get up. Mm-hmm. You're staying up past your bedtime. You don't really want to go to sleep, but mm-hmm. you know, you're tired. So yeah, we're real sensitive to that with mm-hmm. him. And it's hard because at that point, honestly, I'm tired. Right. I right. know I said to you the other night, I'm like, I can't deal with this. And you're like, well, you must teach your son. Okay. I know I was just saying, I can't deal with this right now. I'm so tired, you know, cause sometimes you're just so exhausted and he's like, just, you don't even see light at the end of the bedtime tunnel. When is right. this kid going to fall asleep? But you right. know, right. he eventually does and it's yes. all good. But yeah, that, that's definitely something that we've been working on. And another thing that I have noticed recently And this is all a positive thing. Um, But he has been asking so many questions Mm -hmm. and wanting to know. Read the sentence. Everything. Everything is read the sentence. Mm -hmm. If there are letters on a sign and we're out in public or we're here at home or he sees anything, (laughs) he wants us to read to him. And he's trying to read as well, which is great. He'll read the words he knows and sound out what he can. And then if he can't, he wants us to do it for him. And then we try to go behind that and explain so he's not just memorizing things but mm-hmm. actually can has some comprehension he, that goes he with it. He has a heightened curiosity at, about not only signs but other things too like oh. air conditioners. Anything mechanical right yes, now for sure. Like I mean he wants to know where the air goes in, where it comes out and where the thermostat is and when is it going to turn on. <laughs> yes. And when's yep. the number going to change and mm-hmm. you know at the big Walmart they don't have a thermostat on the wall but right. at church they do have a thermostat cuz he's going to find your thermostat Yes. That if we go into a building and that Sam's Club air conditioning is dirty. Yeah, he does say that. <laughs> <laughs> so you know he's always talking about the air conditioners, which I so I have heard other parents talk about this, especially um, with Aspergers. A lot I've heard that like a, their children will get fixated on a certain topic and then they learn that topic through and through Mm -hmm. you know like if they like a sport they're going to learn every detail and every stat about every player it's it's good for us to feed that because it's building his language i mean if he is is really excited about learning what a sign says you know we have to enforce that and and go all the way in you know put all our chips in and teach him about that subject that he's interested in because he is going to pick up other words that are going to be used in daily life right it's building his language and other ways that things work you know air conditioner might work the same similar to a hot water heater or you know so he's going to have overlapping skills knowing how things work well yeah and i think you know instead of letting him get stuck on just air conditioners you know we've expanded that in the refrigerator he wants to know the buttons for the Mm -hmm. freezer and i mean this kid's liked appliances for years yeah anybody that's followed us on social media he used to just spend time at home depot or sit there in the Open appliance and department the and yeah. or just watch the dryer go in circles watching mm-hmm. the laundry fall you know i mean he's always been very intrigued with how things work we're just i'm even thinking it might be a great idea if we could connect him with someone who repairs appliances so mm-hmm. he can actually begin using tools and try his hand at it why yeah, not well, i mean he's know. wanting to know every single thing now at in the cars he wants to know what every button means mm-hmm. he wants to know what every on the phone on the phone he wants to know what every button means yeah. i mean yeah. he is so intrigued with anything that has buttons motors yeah um sounds you know for instance it's, he, he loves was, all of that he was playing with the box fan that we have a little fan that sits on the floor and i thought and he he wanted to go turn it on like right in the middle of our our school our homeschool session. So I'm like, okay, well, do I make him sit here and finish school, or do I let him go turn on the fan? So I decided, you know, that's 
one benefit of homeschool is, hey, you know, if he is distracted by the fan, is going to be continued to be distracted by the fan. um, You know what? We're going to go over to the fan and I'm going to show him how it works. You know, the electricity comes from the wall, goes down the cord and he can see the wire. I should point to the wire. The wire goes up to the switch and that's where electricity goes. Then when you turn on the switch, it goes from the switch to the motor And that's what makes the fan blades go around. And so he was all over that. He told me all about it when I came home. Yes, that was like Mm -hmm. a lesson in itself. And he learned all that stuff. And, you know, once we did that and he knew everything that was going on with the fan and how it worked, you know, we probably spent 15 or 20 minutes on it. And then I said, okay, well, let's go back to school to school you know and he's like okay and i love that i love it too it's it's really terrific it is i agree so yeah the, I, he's just he's like a sponge right now mm-hmm. you know i was telling you that's normally you know with typical child behavior they'll start asking all those questions what's this what's this what's this because they want to learn and that's usually in that two to three age range Mm -hmm. you know Bryce is just wanting to know everything Mm -hmm. you know but even to another level because he is six and because of the way his brain is wired he just wants to know what everything says not just what it is but Mm -hmm. what it does and why it's there and what the letters mean because you know he's all about the alphabet and words so yeah yeah, it's been pretty cool i did want to mention also uh the genetic doctor that we visited uh the other month she wanted to retest him for his carnitine level because we were supplementing him Yes, and um she says well i think what we ought to do is retest his blood work because he may be getting the carnitine now through new foods that he's eating and i said okay that'd be awesome so we did that and uh, it came back right in the middle of the normal range and we were so happy jumping up and down we just threw that supplement in the trash (laughs) you know so we are done with that yeah so uh, you know it's just one of those things again to earlier in the episode we were talking about hope and and moving forward and and things developing, you know, that's it. Now we've got him eating a better diet and more mm-hmm. foods. And so that's one less supplement and one less deficiency that mm-hmm. he has. And yeah. that's the key. You know, those deficiencies that affect the brain, there's a lot of truth to that. And mm-hmm. uh, so, yeah, that's a that's a big victory that that is now natural and not through a supplement. So. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's cool. Uh, another thing that's popped up in the past few weeks actually occurred Christmas Eve. But what I wanted to explain about Bryce, so, you know, again, this podcast is about helping people understand a little bit of our world and how Bryce thinks differently, you know, than we do. And he has what I'm calling delayed emotion reactions. Mm -hmm. Um, And specifically what happened was we had our Christmas Eve, um, you know, celebration with my family and the end of each year, (laughs) when we get done unwrapping all the presents, there's a big wrapping paper battle. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, everybody's kind of grabbing their paper and and it's the younger kids, which are, they're grown up now, but you know, the younger versus the older. And now it's even like a timer that everybody gets to throw up for three minutes. And, yes. You when, know. I, when I came into the family, uh, when we were done op- opening presents, everybody was just kind of sitting around. So one year I just balled up a piece of paper and I threw it at one of the kids and that started it. it, it. And now it is an annual tradition that we all look <laughs> forward to, except Bryce. So, yeah. uh, so And Bryce has been there every year for this. But again, how much awareness did he have? Yeah. Before now, this is the first year that he's had a lot more awareness. Mm-hmm. So, not only was there the wrapping paper going on, my parents got each of us these security alarms to put, oh, yeah. yeah, to keep on you, you know, with great intentions. Because, <laughs> so in other words, I have this on my purse now, and if someone, if I was uncomfortable or I needed to bring attention to escape, I can pull this and it makes a a horrible loud sound like a smoke alarm yeah kind of sort of so instead of, yeah yeah so you know it's like a safety alarm well one of my brothers pulled that alarm right when the thing started and if you're familiar with our podcast at all you will know that bryce is very sensitive to loud sounds and so 
he came out of the kitchen when that happened into the living room. And then I just saw his face and I was on the other side of the room. Of course, you're going, where's Bryce? And I'm like, I don't know. And then I saw him. You don't, you don't know. I'm like, I mean, I knew he was in the house, but where was he? And of course, I wasn't expecting this alarm to go off. But Bryce, to his credit, walked all the way through all that madness over to the door to go out to the front porch because he knew that was the safe space for him. Mm -hmm. And so he did that without making, I mean, there were no meltdowns. There was no, he didn't even say anything about it, really. Mm -hmm. He he was covering his ears, so we knew that. Mm -hmm. He went out on the porch. I went out there with him. Everything finished. And he never said one thing to us about that whole situation until two weeks later. All of a sudden, he says, out of the blue, Daddy made a red choice. And you're just sitting there. It's like, (laughs) what what did he do? (laughs) And then he said, Bryce is sad. Daddy made a red choice. Well, what what did Daddy do? And then he was able to say the paper. Throwing paper. And then throwing paper was, and I'm like, oh. And we had to think about that. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, oh, at Mamaw's house? Yes, throwing paper ball circles, paper circles is what he called them. And you tried to make it an educational thing. Oh, you mean the spheres? (laughs) (laughs) Did I? I don't know. (laughs) I think you're trying to distract him too. But um, yeah, so he was able to tell us in his own way that he was, he was mad at you Mm -hmm. because you had made a red choice by throwing the paper and it was too loud. Mm -hmm. And then, then he mentioned the noise too. He didn't know what to call it, the siren. But he was really mad that everybody was throwing the paper and it wasn't safe. And then he mentioned about fire. Well, last year in 2018, <laughs> I wasn't there. You weren't there because you were, you were sick. But the paper went up in mom's chandelier and there was one that caught on fire. Yeah. Now, I'm wondering, did he really remember that or did he hear us talking about that? Because it did come up that evening. And that's something with him. I don't know. He says things from well, years before that I'm like, plus you the, know that? the little alarm that that Andy pulled yeah. sounds like well, a fire. True. So he might be associating detector. that yeah. way. Yeah. <clears throat> well, he was upset about it. So, you know, I told you, you need to apologize because at that point, that's really what he was looking for, yeah. you know? And so then you said, I'm sorry, you're right. Daddy made a red choice. I shouldn't have done that. And then it went back and forth and he said, you made a red choice. And you're like, I know I did. I'm sorry. Well, you made a red choice. <laughs> you know? And I, I think he just needed to get that off his chest. And I do not know what brought that to his mind at that particular moment because we were just driving and we weren't even near moms. Yeah. But he got that off his chest. Apparently wasn't enough because he brought it up two other times mm-hmm. after that, but not as long and not as upset. But he needed that reassurance again and he needed to express that. Mm -hmm. And I've seen him do that with a couple of other things. And I thought to myself, can you, I mean, really, can you imagine the parents who their children are not able to express that? And then weeks later, they're acting out with a behavior because they're Mm -hmm. upset because of something that occurred weeks before and their child is just now really processing that and able to react to it because that is what happens with Bryce. Mm -hmm. It takes him sometimes hours, days, and now we know weeks Mm -hmm. to process an emotion, you know, similar to like the fear of the roller coaster at Disney. He did not say anything that day, but later it Mm -hmm. all came out. And yeah. And you know, uh, something like that when that happens is, you know, we would have difficulty in getting him to return to that location. You know, a mamma and papa's house is a regular place that he goes. So if he's afraid that there's going to be an alarm that goes off there or that there's going to be throwing paper balls again, that he's not going to want to go back there. And we've experienced that in the past with other venues where, you know, a sudden loud noise Mm -hmm. or whatever, and he would not step foot back into that place again and and so it really does affect them because they can't predict like we can what is going to happen in the future regarding those types of things right because it's almost as if it's kind of like when he goes to the car wash 
or even if he sees an elevator, he is, you would think it was the first time he's so excited. Mm -hmm. Like I know he knows what's going to happen, but yet he, it's almost like as if he couldn't predict it. And then it's a happy thing. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's the same thing for negative things. And plus, not only can you not predict, but when you can't express, that's my, you know, that's why I'm grateful that Mm -hmm. he was able to really tell us this because we have had our share of meltdowns in the past you sure, know, when he, he was younger, because he couldn't tell us and mm-hmm. we wouldn't know that he was angry about something or that he was sad about something, you know, unless we can just see the tears. But you you really or he just held it in because Bryce is a very deep thinker. I mean, mm-hmm. there's times that he's just staring off and that mind is just going and you have no clue what he's thinking about. Yeah. At least now he is telling us more often, you know, good or bad or random you know Mm -hmm. again bryce's random thoughts but at least he lets us know what he's thinking even if it doesn't make any sense at that moment but it's all good it's hilarious he'll just be playing a game or be on the zip line or whatever he's doing and then he'll randomly quote uh a paragraph from his bear snores on book or he'll quote a bible verse yeah he was quoting his bible verse Uh, random my favorite was the other night when we're laying in bed (laughs) Everybody's about to go to sleep. He's over in his bed. It's dark. It's quiet. And I hear, hey, Siri, call Sam's Club. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, th- I'm guessing you you must have made a call to Sam's Club earlier. But for him, it's yeah. so cute. He just like has these random things that come out of nowhere. It's, it's funny. You he have to is, laugh. He is fun. Uh, another real positive thing that, you know, we're talking about the progression and and where how far we've come in four years you know it's like a thinking where we were four years ago three years ago even two years ago and a year ago everything just gets better you know and a Mm -hmm. little easier but um i had uh, a chance to go to tennessee Uh, one of my best friends was uh, celebrating her 50th birthday and so it was important for me to go and be there and of course you you guys were invited too, but mm-hmm. at that time Bryce was in school, like a regular windmill public point. school. Yeah, yeah, he was in a public school with the schedule there, and we, we didn't knew want to take him out. It was going to be in January. Yeah. We knew it would be cold, and and there was going to be a party. I was going to say yeah. I was going yeah. to a birthday party, and so we knew that he would not enjoy the party, and you wouldn't be able to go with me. Right, I'd have to watch. You him, know, so, so it would really be about Bryce going on the airplane. So we made the decision. No, it would be good for me to go by myself. And you guys can hang here Mm -hmm. and um, we will see how that goes. Well, you know, that was, I don't know, five months ago we made that decision. So now fast forward Mm -hmm. and it's the day before I'm supposed to leave and we hadn't told Bryce. Now we do like to prep him for things, but, you know, how far in advance do you prep him, especially if it's going to upset him? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that's that was our concern. So when I came home from work that day. (laughs) <laughs> he was at my car door with tears and the little lip quivering going, it's OK, mommy, it's OK. And I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. So then when I got out, you're like, I just told him that you're leaving tomorrow. I'm like, oh, OK. I had to. I, I, I understand. I, it hadn't crossed my mind up until the moment that I told him that I needed I need she's leaving tomorrow. I need to tell him like asap because he needs time and i'm like i had forgotten to tell him right uh days before or whatever but you know you don't want him perseverating on that i think that's the word that's a big word um you know for days or weeks or whatever but you do need to warn him of coming events true you know, like that yeah and that's a serious one if mommy's not going to be here so that's a big one and and i knew it i knew he would be upset not so much that I was gone. Yes, he would know I was gone, but he was going to be really upset that I was going on an airplane and he wasn't. Yeah. That I knew would be the core mm-hmm. issue. And I was right about that. So when you told him, I mean, that's what he was saying, you know, no, Bryce, go with mommy on the plane. Mm-hmm. And then I was explaining no. And, you know, I was snuggling with him. And again, Bryce doesn't do like the tantrum meltdowns. Bryce does tears and he Mm -hmm. tries not to cry so he's like trying to be this brave little boy (laughs) while his lip is quivering so your heart is like shattered into all these pieces while you're trying to console and explain to him so that's what i was doing and um so you know i was just sitting there holding him and explaining it and then i really felt like god gave me this nugget of wisdom that 
just tell him really why he's not going right. and he can understand this. Because and so I just party. said, you know, I'm going to Miss Wendy's birthday party and it's going to be really loud and there's going to be a lot of loud music and lots of people and we're going to sing happy birthday to her and there's going to be loud music. You don't like birthday parties. Do you like them? Yes. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. You know, I said, it's not, you just wouldn't like it, but I do. It's okay for me. It's okay for mommy to go and I'll be safe. But for you, you wouldn't like it. And that's why you can't go to the party. So he sat there for a few moments Mm -hmm. and then he said, where are my headphones? (laughs) I was like, oh, I said, well, that is a great idea, but your headphones wouldn't work at this party. It would still be too loud. Mm And then he's like, but my airplane, where's Bryce's airplane? Where's Bryce's? So we already have our trip planned to go to Canada later this year. And the elves just made toys for him. So I played off of that. And I said, they're making your airplane now. (laughs) And it'll be ready in August when we go to Canada. And that worked for him. It's hard to come up with stuff on the fly. It is. you did a great job. Thank you. And it really worked. And at that time, his um, sitter had arrived. And so we were able to say, hey, you know, Missy's here to play with you. And I started tickling him. And that's a test. If you tickle him and he laughs, that means he's good. If you tickle him and he's not (laughs) wanting it, okay, it is not over. It's still not over, yeah. He started laughing. And we prepped Missy. knew he was good. And And, and he did great. Yeah, she said he didn't even mention it. So then that night when we laid down to go to sleep, and again, he always reflects. And then he just said, Mommy goes on the plane tomorrow and Bryce gets to watch it. Because I told him, you can watch Mm -hmm. the plane and you can go on the escalator at the airport. And I'm going to go to the party on Saturday. And then on Sunday, you get to go back to the airport and pick me up because I was only Mm -hmm. gone for those two nights. So I was so proud of him. And for me to be able to go away and know that he was really okay, Mm -hmm. fully aware of what was going on and no secrets, you know, it was wonderful. And even... You know, you guys called me on Saturday and we talked briefly, but he was totally fine. He doesn't need the FaceTime. It wasn't like he needed to see Mm -hmm. me. But you said like on Sunday, he was asking about me because he knew, you know, it was like we told him, you're not going to see her on Saturday, but you'll see her on Sunday. So then he did that. And then when we got there, it was super sweet. But um, at the airport where I flew into, (laughs) they have like a... And a waiting area so that people can sit and there's a glass wall so you can see through it and you can see everybody as they're coming up, you know, from the plane. And But what I didn't know was there's a security invisible line that you're not supposed to cross. Mm-hmm. So as well, I'm... here's the scoop. You were walking up and of course he was jumping up and down because he saw you and he yes. was excited. So, And then there was the TSA agent there at the gate so i knew in my mind that once you had walked past the security the tsa agent that it would be okay because she was there to guard people from going down toward the planes gotcha so that was the thought in my mind so when you walked past her and bryce started to go toward you i i grabbed his i had his hand and um, you walked past the guard. I'm like, okay. You were and thinking in the clear? I thought yeah. you were in the clear, but he zipped around the corner there, <laughs> around the glass uh, partition and ran toward you. And then all of a sudden it was like, boop, 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 morning yeah. We set off security. <laughs> And uh, the lady's like, oh, my goodness. She's calling on a radio. Stand down. Stand down. Put your guns down. Oh, now, my <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I love that. Man. Here I'm having this sweet welcome home moment with my son who missed oh, me and acknowledged yes. me. I mean, because really, great. let's flash back two years ago. I know. We went to Philadelphia at the same time of year. Um, Super Bowl champs. Thank yeah. you. And we got to go to the parade. And. Bryce did not even really know we were he gone. Didn't really he miss stayed us. with my parents. She sent me pictures. He was sitting there watching the dryer go around. Yep. He didn't ask about us. I think she said on that last day, he like maybe asked once or twice. And this was when he was four and a half, you mm-hmm. know? He just 
he was not aware. And this time he knew he coped really well with his emotions and knew, okay, mommy's leaving, but mommy's coming back. But then he was so excited to see me. I had my arms open. He just he like just came and ran in, in my arms. arms. It was, it was super I'm like, wow, sweet. Wow, what a switch, you yeah. know, from the last time. Yeah. So again, so. I, you know, I share these things. And I wasn't too. expecting that either. Oh, I you know. know. So when you he, weren't <laughs> because that's never happened yeah. before. Even when I went in June last year for my birthday, it, that was not the reaction that I got mm-hmm. when I came back. Right. He knew I was there, but it was not like that at all. So yeah, it was a big, big difference. Special. Yeah. So again, I, I, we share this because it just, it's another big picture of the hope, you know, that is out there for those who I know are wondering, is this ever going to get better? And I'm going to tell you, I was, I was wearing those shoes, Mm -hmm. you know, they were laced up and fitting very well and it hurt Mm -hmm. a lot. You know, when your son doesn't even know you're in the room or, you know, yeah. the meltdowns are happening or we couldn't even go to a why. hotel and we wanted to leave right away because it was such a horrible experience. And, yeah. you know, we've been there we've done that. And now, you know, it's just it's just a, it's a better place. There you is know, where we're at. Every child is different. You know? Every child is different. Even parents that I have listened to on podcast or that I've met here locally um, and their children, you know, still need a lot of assistance. They still. Still, in their own ways, it's easier Mm -hmm. because there's progression. And Mm -hmm. as long as there's progression and you're moving forward, that's what you hope for. And and I I was even if it's baby steps, it is. In fact, I took the book by Rodney Pete, um, not my boy. And I read that on the plane on the way there and on the way back. I mean, it was an excellent book to read for parents um, who have children on the autism spectrum. And I've told you, you, you'll really Mm -hmm. get a lot out of that as well. And it was very raw and it was very real. And one of the things that he said in there that really resonated with me was, you know, as parents, we can't put our time, our timetable on our children. Mm-hmm. We, can't. we can't. We have to let them develop at their pace. We're there to help them, mm-hmm. but it's going to be their pace. And as long as they're moving, great. Yep. yep. As long as they're moving, that's, I mean, that's what we want. And that brings to mind right now that kindergarten is going pretty smoothly he's picking up a lot of the concepts uh there's a couple that he's not really getting like rhyming he i don't know if it's the way he hears the words or the way they're said but he's just he can't really wrap his head around what words that rhyme but he's not going to be a rapper i yeah that's okay (laughs) um but i know that there's going to come a time when it's not easy like it is now for him to to absorb these right. things and learn at the pace that he's learning you know math is going to get harder language is going to get harder you know and and science and it's it's just all going to get harder so i anticipate in the future that we may not be on pace for um that type of thing so i know looking into the future that I'm I'm not going to put the pressure on myself or him to be ahead of his grade or even keeping up with his grade because I know that he's going to learn at his pace. I think that's fantastic. And, you know, we don't have a regular school schedule, so we don't have, quote unquote, summer breaks or spring breaks or winter breaks. It's just whenever we're going to do when we need a break, things, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So there's no timetable pressure. So we don't have to worry about, he's got to learn all of this by the end of May or the beginning of June. Yeah. And even then, uh, I think what I'm saying is if, no, if, he, I, I gotcha. if he falls a grade behind, yeah, that's going to be okay. As long as he's still doing school and that he is still progressing. If he's not progressing, then we got another issue. That's on our a hands, different story, you know, and we so. have to find a different curriculum. That, yeah, or, or something, different something. Or, make a change. Right. That's all. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. So, so yeah, I, I love that. I think that's a great philosophy that you have for school. It's good for you. It's good for Bryce. I think it's part of the reason why the anxiety level is down in the Coulter Hotel. And I think it is time to wrap up this episode. 33. 33 is in the books. Thanks to everyone who has tuned in today. If you're new, we're glad you found us. We hope you'll come back and hear more. And if you've already been on this journey with us and you continue to listen, we just really thank you from the bottom of our hearts. 
and we hope that you are finding value out of this. And for those who have reached out to us, we thank you and just know we're here for you. And uh, we're here to encourage. We are. We are. And that's where our hearts are. So, all right. Until next time. Have a great week. All right. See you. Bye.